In order to begin our journey into cloud computing, it helps to understand some of the central concepts around cloud in itself. So that's where we'll begin. To begin with, looking at cloud computing as a whole, think about the traditional data center. Perhaps you had VMware there running, but old days were more around, okay, I'm gonna rack and stack a server, then I'm going to install an operating system on it, then I'm gonna hand it over to the business. Well, the process of managing that data center, the power, the cool, and even things like VMware that came along and made things much, much simpler was still very cumbersome and very difficult to do. And so cloud computing, especially for startups and this wave of workloads that are going to Azure is making things much, much easier. But there are some core things to understand around what is cloud computing in itself. It's not just a case of, hey, my workloads are running in the cloud. Well, first of all, cloud computing is about renting resources versus purchasing hardware. So somebody else's data center, you're going to rent resources from it. You pay only for what you use. Different billing applies to different services, but in a sense, hey, I've got this new product I wanna develop, my new application team needs these services in order to develop it. You can go ahead, bill for those services, hand them over, and then when you stop using them, you no longer need to pay for them. Again, you run your applications in someone else's data center. And I wanna stress that because it is somebody else's data center. Microsoft in the case, or Google, or Amazon, if you choose the other cloud providers, they're managing the data center. They're managing the power, the cooling, the security of who goes in and out. That's still something that has to be done. It's just managed for you. In addition, the cloud provider is responsible for the physical hardware and all the facilities necessary to execute your work. But more importantly, the cloud provider is responsible for keeping the services that they provide up to date. I stress that because there's often a misunderstanding that, hey, I've got a VM running in the cloud, it's patched for me. No, that's not the case. They're providing the VM as a service to you, but you still have to patch and maintain the operating system. As you move up the stack and understand about PaaS and SaaS services, it'll become a little bit more clear in terms of what you own and are responsible for versus what the provider is responsible for. If we look at the core cloud services that are available, these are some of the major ones that you should be aware of. Number one is obviously compute. Now this could be virtual machines, so it could be a Windows or Linux server that runs in the cloud, could be a desktop as well if you want it to be, uh, could be a web application that you run. Uh, in addition, there's also serverless options like functions and logic apps, so this is where a piece of your application might run on demand, and also containers. They all fall under this compute umbrella. In addition, you have storage. This could be file shares, this could be databases, this could be blob stores, also known as object stores that you run in the cloud where you put lots and lots of images on. Uh, those are all options for you there as well. In addition, we have networking services that are provided for you. These are to secure your connections between say your company on premises and the cloud environment. So Azure, we talk about an express route or a VPN connection between on premises and your public cloud, in this case, Azure. Uh, in addition, you also have network services that are provided in the cloud itself. You don't necessarily have to connect back to on-premises. If you're running solely in the cloud, you might have things like network security groups to help enforce security. Azure Firewalls, another good example out there, load balancing services. Those are things that typically you would have bought on-premises. They're now available as a service for you in the cloud. In addition, you've got a number of application services as well. I mentioned things like web applications. Well, in Azure, they actually provide a service called App Services or App Service Environments. And this is where you can actually take like web applications that ran traditionally on IIS on premises and simply run them in this PaaS type service that runs your application. So a little bit different to VMs where you would have to install and maintain IIS, you just take your .NET application and run it on top of application services. And there's a whole bunch of other options in the space that you'll learn more about a little bit later as well. And last but not least, a growing area is analytics. This is like telemetry, performance data. These are things like Power BI that you might have come across as well. These are all sort of additional add-on services that give more business intelligence on top of your application itself. So that's kind of the core services that you need to be aware of. And as we go through, we'll sort of break these apart and go into more detail about what types of services are available in each bucket. But at a high level, no, these are things that you would typically have done on premises. You can now do them in the cloud, but you pay for what you use.